Hi, I'm going to be demoing Adobe Spark today. In order to access the application, visit adobe.com and then sign in with your UNM email. Once you're signed in with the magnifying glass, click that and then search for Spark. You will see Adobe Spark come up and click that. So now you're in Spark, which is run through the browser. Click on the Get Started Now button. Adobe Spark allows you to create different types of media, such as collages, web pages, slideshows, presentations, social media posts, and then custom sizes. First, I want to show you this brands column over here on the left. So you can create a new brand, which is basically a template that you're going to apply to a web page or a presentation. And I've created one over here, so I'm going to go into this and say edit brand. Here I've uploaded logos. I've created a color scheme. You can either use the color picker or type in a hexadecimal or RGB if you know what that number is. Here you can add additional fonts. I wouldn't, uh, I would recommend only using three if you're doing a web page. For design, you could get away with a few more but they do have a wide selection. And then down here, it will take your color scheme and it will give you options based on that, such as light, medium, and dark. And then you can also set up a header and footer for your web pages. So on the right side, you have your sub navigation, header and footer, and then you have additional options up here. So for my header, I could put more call to action in social media if I wanted that in my header. Um, but instead in my footer, I put a call to action, which is a contact us button. I've also added a social media button and then my background color is gray. When I was done creating this, I selected done and then it saved to a themes folder, which I will show you in a minute. So going back home by clicking on this icon, um, you can see all my recent projects down here. So let's start with our web page. So I, this is one that I created earlier today, and I'm going to go in here and edit. The the one of the things that's a little bit of a drawback is you don't have a ton of customization. But if you don't know a lot of things about web design or the other Adobe applications, um, you don't really need to have a great need for a lot of customization. So this allows you to be creative and share with other people without having to know a bunch of stuff. So this is a this can be viewed as a presentation or a web page. But basically, um, I added anything I click on, I can replace. So I created this earlier, but if I want to update anything, I can just click on it and start typing or click on my image and, and click on replace and find a new image from my desktop to upload. Or I can find a free stock photo or use any of these resources here. Um, these are sections, so wherever you see a plus sign, you can add a new section. Like right here, I added an H1 tag for a heading, and then I put in my text. And then here, I added a photo grid. I'm going to do edit right now just to show you. Um, these are a little particular. I To get them lined up this way, I had to actually resize them in Photoshop. But if you have a lot of images that are close to the same size, you'll probably do, it'll look fairly good. So these were my own images. So I used the upload photo button and then I basically just browsed for my photos, selected the ones that I wanted, and then they uploaded in this nature. Um, same here. So you can see here with my drawings, 
whatever I, whatever size I uploaded them is actually the size that they came in at. Um, so I didn't, the program doesn't really resize things too much. And I'll show you an example of that here. So up here at the top, I did a preview. This is my web page preview. And you can see when you click on these, it'll give you a light box. It gives you a light box gallery that you can go through, which is pretty nice. But these were the size of my photos when I uploaded them. So it didn't do any resizing. Same here. You can see these photos were a little larger. Um, if you want a certain size, you can use your mobile app or maybe watch a short uh, video in Photoshop about how to do that. So I'll exit out of this uh, web preview. They also have a present preview mode. So this shows you what your presentation would look like in more of a slide design where you scroll and it shows each thing on its own slide. You still get the same gallery light box preview. but there's a little bit more space between everything. So I'll exit out of this. Now, if I wanna share this, I just uh, go ahead and publish, and then it generates a link right here. So I can either put it on social media or go ahead and copy this link. And then if I send that to anybody, they can see it. They don't necessarily have to be using Spark. So here's my web page, and it is somewhat responsive, which is pretty cool because if I scroll down on a minimized browser, I can still see the content. And then if I maximize it a little more. So some of the drawbacks of this, this is so this would be the link I would send to people, but the drawbacks of using Spark are you can really only do kind of a one-off page that scrolls and goes to different sections. You can't necessarily put in navigation that I could see. Like I would have loved to have put some more navigation in and built the pages out. I would have liked to have also exported this as an HTML so I could upload it to my server as my own design. But that's kind of a limitation. But nonetheless, you can still share a very nice looking site. Um, if you want to change the theme, I'm using my own theme right now that I created, the West Moon design that I showed you earlier, but you can come down here and they also have other themes if you don't have one and that you can play with. So let me go back to the home page and let's uh, take a look at a post here. So this can be exported they have a lot of different templates for posters, postcards, social media posts, um, different things like that. So these were the photos that I imported. But uh, whenever I come down here and click on a new template, it readjusts what I have with my photos and puts it into that layout. And then if I actually click on a photo, I can scale or rotate. Um, whatever I feel like that works best for that particular template. So let me keep scrolling down if I like any more of these. Some of them have uh, color effects on them. Like this one is not colorizing any of the photos. It's uh, more just scaling them. So let's see here. The nice thing, let me go back up here. The nice thing about this is it automatically saves. So whether you're in a web page or one of these, you're, it's automatically saving. On the print and social media posts, you can undo. On the web page, it doesn't let you undo. I've noticed, um, so if you find out, let me know. But for these ones, you can actually download as a JPEG or a PDF. 
which is nice because then you can post this to your social media or if you have a website, you can put it on your website. Um, so that makes, that makes it really easy to make this type of branding. Let me show you a couple other things. I'm going to go into this uh, web page that I created earlier. So the cool thing, it always starts off with this large screen. And then, so right here, these are sections. So I had did, I went add new section. And then I did, I wanted a split layout. And then it created this. And then here, I could upload my photo. And then over here, I could add my text, make it bold, put in a hyperlink as you can see, and then you can swap these. So let's say I want that to start with text and then I want these to be every other one. Um, so let's look at the stock photos because they have some really great choices for stock photos. I'm gonna, I clicked on the photo, and then I do replace. So here's your options, but I said find free photos. So I typed in New Mexico on top, and then this is what it gives me. Let's see, there's so many great photos on here. They're they're super amazing. Um, I do like that, but I'm not sure. So let me just keep looking around. So if you do use a free photo, it will put the attribution or the credits in the bottom of the web page. Um, so if you're, if you don't mind that, it's a good choice. Let's see. I don't know, I could go through these photos um, for a while. And we'll keep it at this for now. And then let's see here. You don't see it now, but if you do preview. Oh, here it is. Credit. So um, it's giving the credit for this one. But I'm not seeing the credit for this top one. So it looks like some photos have credits and some don't. So anyways, I'm going to do share. Publish and share link. Then it gives me uh, the link. Oh, it doesn't look like it's the most recent one. Okay. So it looked like because I had several versions of this, I had to click on that update link at the top so that it would get the most refreshed version of that photo. So it's, it's taking a little while. I've also noticed like if you go back in and edit and you have a lot of photos, um, you know, the more times you're in there, the less time it takes to publish because it's already saved in the program cache. So it's like it's just taking a little bit of time. Okay, so I was able to finally export this link. It just took a little bit. And then I'm opening up a new browser. I copied that link in there. And so now here's our, our really pretty web page, things to do in New Mexico. Our sections where we did our split grid and added our photos. This is one that I uploaded. This is one I used on a free stock photo site. All right, well, so far, I think that concludes kind of how Adobe Spark works. Um, it does take a little bit of messing around just to get used to 
their navigation. And if you are used to more um, functionality or more control, I should say, um, you know, this could be a little frustrating, but at the same time, it offers people that don't know design very well a lot of uh, a lot of leeway to do things they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. All right, thanks.